Now, what's interesting in this with the electromagnetic force, um, classically what we've been talking about, you know, is that the electric fields are pushing off each other. Uh, but actually what's, a, what's happening according to the standard model is that there's an actual exchange. So here's an electron, right? And this electron are both moving and they interact with each other. They push off each other. This electron takes off this way, right? The other electron takes off this way. And what actually happens is there's an exchange of a photon. So this electron shoots a photon off like this. It hits this electron in conservation of energy or conservation momentum. You know, they both head off, right? Um, it absorbs it. This electron, however, when it shoots this off, it shoots off in this direction, conservation of momentum. And so really, in, in the electromagnetic force, we're dealing with the exchange of a photon, um, which should, you know, it's kind of sounds kind of strange, right? So the again, the top electron shoots off or shoots out a photon and then um, goes to the bottom right, and then the bottom photon absorbs the photon and goes downwards. Now, Richard Feynman uh, helped, you know, well, he, he did a lot of things, um, but one of, the, one of the neat things that he was able to do was communicate these very, very difficult ideas into, very, into ways that people, normal people like us, <laughs> could understand, right? Um, just, you know, people that uh, aren't experts in, in particle physics. Now, these diagrams, um, you know, are, are a little bit, uh, well, they're, they're, they're very helpful. Um, they can get quite complex. And so we're just going to look at the very basics of it um, to look at that. Now, for the diagrams that you're going to see here, the time is going from left to right. And so you'll see that here. Now, the diagrams that I'm about to show you, the next five, um, show the same thing if we look at it from, you know, the right angle. So in other words here, let's say, you know, you have an electron, right? And it absorbs a photon. Well, if it does that, it's kind of like a collision. These two collide together, they move off together, right? And so you've got that. Now, this one should look kind of strange because a positron absorbs a photon, right? Well, that's, you know, you know, if time is going from left to right, right? So here's time is going from left to right. It looks like these positrons are going against time and absorbing, right? It looks like, you know, this photon is, or electrons going here, it's absorbing this and then going this way, right? Well, it's not exactly that way. So it's, we're not really moving back in time. Um, that was one of the things as I was working back through this, uh, I wanted to find a good explanation of what's actually happening um, and why the diagrams are the way they are. So I'll give you, uh, well, you actually, you can go ahead and pause the clip and um, read through this and, and then put the underlying things in there. And I think that'll help you uh, understand a little bit more about these diagrams. Okay, so um, in this case here, an electron emits a photon, right? So this electron is going up and as it emits a photon, right, this one shoots down like this, conservation momentum. Uh, this one, right, a photon actually materializes, right? So you have energy materializing into matter. You have an electron coming out as well as a positron. Now, if you notice here, anytime you have anti, an antimatter, you know, antiparticle, their arrow is going to be pointing against time. And like, like we saw in that last clip, it's not really going backwards in time. Um, but you know, represent, you know, for this to be represented correctly, it's got to be going backwards. And so, um, likewise with this, if an electron and positron collide together, they annihilate each other and a photon's produced, um, of energy. You've got that here, you know, the electron and the positron collide. Now, what's interesting about this is in all of these pictures, notice what happened with the arrows. This arrow is continuing like this. This arrow continues like this. This arrow, both the arrows are continuing. This one, both arrows are continuing. This one, both arrows are continuing. And then you have the photon out there. This is actually the exact same picture. If you rotated all of these and looked at them, um, they're all the same picture. And so back to that, that quote that I just showed you, you know, this is showing that, you know, maybe it's just the same particle, um, but it, going backwards and forward in time. And so, yeah, hopefully that helps with the intuition there. So now what we're going to take a look at 
is this idea of annihilation. We've already looked at two examples, the antiproton and the proton colliding, and then energy being produced. Same with this electron and the anti-electron here. So annihilation, um, you know, occurs when, you know, you have, you know, the two annihilate and then you have something being produced. Now, in this case, this is kind of interesting. You have an electron and a positron colliding together. Um, that becomes a photon. And then that photon uh, becomes a particle and an antiparticle after that that are produced. So afterwards, you have a new particle and an antiparticle that are going out. And so that's an important idea where you can go back and forth from energy to mass, right? What we looked at in that earlier, you know, looked at earlier in nuclear where mass and energy are interchangeable, right? So, um, yeah, so it's an important idea here. Now, we know, uh, and, and this I probably should have had earlier, what these, these pictures are called are interaction vertices. So interaction vertices are what these pictures are show, showing here. We looked earlier at electron scattering where we had an electron push off the other one and the medium, the exchange particle is a photon. And that's what we call these, the exchange particles where you know, this electron exchanges, it, it sends the photon and this one absorbs it and then shoots off. Okay, so now we're ready to talk about the three exchange particles for the weak force. Um, we kind of brushed over the weak force earlier on, but now we're going to unpack the weak force a little bit more. Unlike photons, these particles, the W and Z bosons, do actually have mass. And so um, if we take a look at the four fundamental forces, this is the bottom of your equation sheet. It's kind of nice. They unpack each of them for you. You have the weak nuclear. You have the gravitational weak nuclear electromagnetic. You also have the strong force. They also talk about the particles that are interacting. So that's really nice. Um, with a weak force, there's a lot of different examples. We'll just look at a few here. Let's say you had a down quark that turned into an up quark, right? Let's say in a certain decay. The W boson can be responsible for making that happen. And so that's what that's showing here. The up quark becomes a down quark because of this W boson. Um, this electron, right? This electron um, now becomes a neutrino electron neutrino and a W boson shoots off. And so, yeah, you know, so you're kind of seeing the flow in time here. Now, this is the one that I wanted to focus um, some more attention on. If you remember in beta minus decay, right, we talked about how, you know, you have a neutron and in that nucleus, you have too many neutrons, right? And so the neutron becomes a proton. And we did that nuclear act outside where I said, you know, Okay, here's the weak nuclear force, you know, the whole nucleus shakes and, you know, all of a sudden a proton is formed out of a neutron. Well, the weak nuclear force is responsible for that, right? But it's actually, you know, it's the W boson that's, that's making this happen. So if you notice here, the down quark becomes an up quark. And that W boson is enacting that. Therefore, afterwards an electron is produced as well as a anti-neutrino, electron neutrino. Um, even though the arrow is pointing, in the, and we'll always have the arrow pointing to the left if it's an antiparticle, right? Um, so it's pointing to the left, right? The electron's pointing to the right, it's shot off. And that should make sense, right? Because if you're starting with a neutral charge, then you end up with plus one here, you're gonna have to have minus one to counteract so you still have zero charge afterwards, right? Um, but now we're looking at how that boson is actually enacting that. Um, we could have done this for beta positron decay as well, um, you know, wh whatever example. So this is a little bit more involved example, but you could hopefully, you know, see this, you know, over time, this is changing this into this. This is changing this into this. This is, well, actually, these are staying the same. You know, the down quark staying the same, the up quark staying the same. It's just the down quark here is changing into an up quark. So the strong force now... Um, if we look at the final column here, it has to do with the quarks being held together in the nucleus. And this is a really uh, before an idea, right? The, the quarks being held together. And it's actually the, the particles mediating this are gluons. These gluons are, are, are you know, enacting this. So, you know, we have the quarks and these gluons are the exchange particles making this actually happen. 
And so, you know, instead of a photon, right, between two electrons, the gluon itself is actually holding those quarks together. Now, something that we're not going to get into um, that goes a little bit further is, is the colors, the colors of these quarks um, and their exchange with the, uh, the gluon inside is another critical part, you know, if we go a little bit deeper with that. Um, but, um, you know, hopefully now you've got a good picture of each of the four fundamental forces and what's going on. Now, we do want to talk about the gravitation, the gravitational force. It turns out the exchange particle for gravitational force is a hypothetical particle called the graviton. And um, if it exists, it's expected to be massless um, and have a spin. Now, it's interesting because, you know, with the gravitational force, if you look at the force of gravitation, right, um, we have, you know, force is equal to g m 1 m 2 over r squared, right? So you have forces between masses. Now, in terms, in terms of the whole standard model, this is still, you know, how does the gravitational force fit, fit in with the standard model? You know, it's still tough. So, so they're still working through this. Um, All right, so let's take a look at this example here that um, can be helpful for us. We have, uh, in this case here, two electrons, and these electrons are uh, heading towards each other, and um, it's experiencing an electromagnetic force between two electrons. And so up to this point, we've just said, okay, you know, negative charges uh, repel, and they do, and we see that. Um, but uh, what's actually really happening? And so if we look at the um, uh, over time here, we have our electron over here, and then we have our other electron over here, and they're heading towards each other, um, and we can visualize that. And then they repel, and so they bounce, uh, you know, kind of, you can see that here, they bounce off each other. Um, now, what's actually happening in this case is there is what's called a virtual photon that is exchanged between these two particles that um, affects the electromagnetic force between the two electrons. And, um, and this is kind of strange to think about that, you know, that we've just, up to this point, we've just assumed, you know, the, the, the repelling there. And that's what happens, but um, there is a, a virtual photon that, um, you know, is exchanged between those um, as they, uh, you know, bounce off and separate. Let's take a look at this one here, um, where this is looking at the strong force between, between a proton and a neutron. And we, we've talked about how important the strong force is inside the nucleus. And um, this is, again, between a proton and a neutron. So we can see those two here. Here's a proton, here's a neutron. And um, the uh, exchange particle, in this case here, is a neutral pion. Um, exchange between those and it's mediating the strong nuclear force and the nucleus here between these two and so um, yeah and so the uh, the inner force of inter or the interaction between these two can uh, be visualized that way um, let's take a look at this one where we have a uh, negative beta decay and um, so here's our neutron and um, that neutron becomes a proton and then at the same time, um, there's an emission of an electron, which we can see here. And then um, an anti-neutrino as well is produced. And um, the decay is mediated by a negative, uh, or by a negative W boson, which we see here in the middle. And so we've talked about how the negative bosons, uh, W bosons affect the, um, the weak nuclear force and therefore the uh, the decay that we can see here all right so why don't you go ahead and try here and draw the Feynman diagram for a beta positron decay so based on what you just saw there with the beta minus decay see if you can uh, draw out what the beta positron decay would look like so go ahead and pause the clip and um, give this a try and when you're ready to check you can hit play to continue all right, so um, in this case here, we're using time um, going vertically here, position going from left to right. And um, we have our quarks leptons here um, under the weak nuclear force. And so um, here's our proton. 
and our proton becomes a neutron. And um, we can look at the beta positron decay, and this is the W uh, boson, the positive W boson. And then um, a, a anti or a um, positron is created um, for charge, right? You start with plus one, you got to finish with plus one. So this positron is created, and um, also the neutrino is produced as well. And so um, we have both of those there. All right, so let's go ahead and try this one here, um, the Feynman diagram for a, a proton-electron collision. And so um, in this case here, we can uh, kind of help you think through that. So um, let's uh, write out the equation here, proton plus an electron, um, and then a neutron and a neutrino is produced. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, draw that out. We have our proton and the electron, and they're um, going to interact. And the charge before the charge after is zero, so that's conserved, so that's good. Um, a proton turns into the uh, into a neutron here. Um, we see that, and so that proton turns into a neutron. Um, we've got that, and then. Um, yeah, in this case here, we have the W, uh, negative W boson, and we have the neutrino being produced there. And so, yeah, in this case here, you know, you'd have to know a little bit of the intuition of, you know, what's going on. Um, but yeah, you know, you should be able to, to follow that okay. All right, so um, let's draw the Feynman find, find diagram for this collision, where an exchange particle is given, but no uh, transformation happens. So let's say that we have a neutron and a neutrino, and afterwards we still have a neutron and a, and a neutrino, and uh, there's an interaction here. So um, you know, I'm gonna see if you know, um, see if you can think through that. Try to draw as much of that as you can, um, you know, based on what you've learned so far on how these are drawn. And then uh, when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. But go ahead and pause the clip and give this a try. And um, when you're ready to check, you can hit play. All right, so time going this way, position going this way. Uh, the exchange particle, in this case here, would be the uh, Z um, particle. And so um, the exchange particle. So we have our neutrino, or our um, neutrino, and then we have a neutrino afterwards. Um, we have our neutron and our neutron afterwards. And so in this case here, they're staying the same and we have the interaction between the two and um, we're good to go. All right, so um, let's see if we can draw the Feynman diagram for this collision. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you uh, give this one a try and um, you know, give your best shot there with, with what, um, yeah, what this could look like. And um, yeah, and so um, go ahead and pause the clip and, and draw this out and uh, give that a try. When you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so um, in this case here, we have a neutron that is uh, a neutron and a neutrino um, interact, and then it produces a proton and then an electron. So we have our neutrino, and then we have our neutron. And I guess technically we could we could draw those flip, you know, that you could have the neutron on the other side and the neutrino on the other side. Um, the neutron becomes a proton. And so therefore, um, we've got that there on the right hand side. The uh, neutrino becomes an electron. And um, in this case here, we have the positive W boson um, affecting that. And that's the exchange particle uh, between them.